Welcome back to Halftime Report. I'm Leslie Picker. We're diving deep into clean energy plays. The Biden administration taking steps to combat the climate crisis with last week's passage of the Inflation Reduction Act, sparking questions about the new energy economy. What will the ripple effects be on supply chains and beyond as we move be toward a more energy efficient era? And what are the most crucial alternative energy sources out there? Joining us now is Tom Lydon, vice chairman of Vetify, also along with Tom Johnson, Blue Horizon Capital Partner, who runs the Blue Horizon New Energy Economy ETF, ticker BNE. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for being here. Uh, Tim, the administration pledging $370 billion in energy and climate initiatives more spending in this area than any other single piece of legislation Congress has ever passed, according to Goldman Sachs, mostly, though, in the form of tax credits. Give us your take. Who stands to benefit the most here? Yeah, so as we see it, it's going to be uh, really broad-based. It's not just the, the groups that are going to be generating, distributing, and using the energy that we create today in terms of renewables. But it's also the supply chain, uh, and particularly those that have a focus on a North American supply context or a fair trade partner. Effectively, what they're trying to do by, by utilizing this new Inflation Reduction Act is try and build up that supply chain. We've had all these issues over the last couple of years when it comes to being able to get the materials that we need to build out this infrastructure and everything else that goes with it. And so now we're going to see more capital being put into let's say, the, the friendly uh, economies associated with building out this, uh, this ecosystem. All right. So, Tom, we've already seen a big push toward clean energy ETFs. Do you think this will be the next big catalyst that drives further flows? Yeah, clean energy ETFs have been with us for a while, for sure. Uh, some of the biggest with the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF and the Invesco Solar, but most of them are chock full of wind and solar companies. I think kind of what Tim is saying is, in the future, spread the wealth a little bit. Look for areas like energy storage, battery companies, performance material manufacturers that grab lithium and cobalt out of the ground. Those big ETFs have done great, collectively have $9 billion in them so far. But in the future, spread it around a little bit to global companies, small cap up-and-comers. Yeah. I think that'll make a lot of sense.